today we're going to be talking about uh, YouTube. Um, and I think the reason is, is because a couple of podcasts ago, I was chatting to this guy and he was asking me a couple of questions about online marketing. And he was like, oh, do you need to be doing TikTok? And should like you be doing TikTok? And, and I was like, dude, I'm going to share like in a million dollar strategy right now and when I explain this to you it's going to make so much sense it's going to blow your mind and I think he literally went and called it this is a one million dollar strategy podcast or something because everyone's talking about TikTok and what you should be doing with TikTok but what about YouTube and YouTube is like the second the second most used search uh, engine in the whole wide world uh, and number one is Google and guess who owns YouTube Google So why, you know, everyone keeps looking at TikTok and I'm like, let's just talk about a physiotherapist. Say we've got a physiotherapist and they're here in Burley. Um, Can you imagine them, you know, I don't know, like dancing or twerking or doing something to say, come to my physio in in Burley um, when it's not really location based and the highest the highest uh, demographic of viewers is actually India for TikTok. So When you take that into consideration, I think that if we're going to be using marketing platforms, what we really need to be doing is having a look at those platforms and seeing where is our ideal customer and is this platform going to work for me? Because I don't know how professional you're going to look, you know, doing the Michael Jackson as a physio, um, you know, trying to get people in because TikTok's obviously more entertainment based, YouTube's more education based, but I'm going to go through a few things today. So at the end of the day, uh, Jane, Mrs. Red, she also, uh, <laughs> also encouraged me to do it because I found when I went to her channel that she hasn't quite set it up properly. So if you go to my channel uh, and have a look at my channel and you look at Jane's channel, you'll see that the channels look completely diff- different um, and you're not actually able to see all of Jane's amazing content because it hasn't quite been set up right. So I thought, you know what, we need, we need to run this training um, and um, and I'll be able to show you. So According to a 2020 industry report by social media examiners, 55% of marketers use YouTube, making it the most popular video marketing channel. I mean, that's 55%, which means, you know, the other 45% is being shared across all the other platforms. Now, you can increase your chances of showing up in search results and improving your online rankings by using YouTube, especially because it's owned by Google. And Google is still the number one search engine. Um, if you go into Google and you Google something, how many YouTube videos come up? Okay, you know me, I always talk about the power triangle, going, you know, you've got your website, you've got Google, and you've got all your social media platforms. And that's the power triangle. We want to keep activity amongst that. So it is great for both service-based and e-commerce businesses, and you can seriously reach millions and build a level of trust superior to other content types through YouTube. And this is really important, level of trust that's superior. How trustworthy are you twerking across the dance floor um, as opposed to on YouTube, which is more an educational and formative piece? Um, so, you know, for me, I just, I just choose YouTube. I just do, I do, I do. I just said, I do, I do, I do. It made me think that somebody married a rag doll. Did you hear that on the radio? A real life grown up just married a real life grown up rag doll. Anyway, you can Google that. Um, Cause apparently she had 200 views of someone watching her. So you can go and watch that on YouTube too. Um, So you you can create content on YouTube to promote your products or services, and you can gain more authority and valuable leads when you've obviously got it set up correctly and you've then pointing people across to your website or across to your socials and keep that power triangle going. Um, It can be used as a lead generation tool by sending sending your clients to the next logical place. Okay, so when we talk about the customer journey, we talk about customer mapping, and we talk about buyer persona, we look at what's the next logical step. If they're watching Tara roll around and talk about all the pains that she gets from lying on a mattress in a caravan, what's the next logical step? The next logical step is, hey, check these out on our website or read our reviews or, you know, register for the pre-launch now. It's all about that next step. So you've got to get that strategy right. It's got to be logical to your customer. It's got to be logical to you. 
Um, it's important to know that Google helps people find your service or products online. So when people are searching online, Google is the one that helps them find them there and YouTube is Google. So here's some stats. Uh, Google's number one is the number one site for people searching online uh, and YouTube is number two. Although if you go to U Google, which is number one, you'll still find YouTube videos on there. Um, so just a reminder, but if you want to rank on Google, it's important that you use the right words on your website. Uh, those words obviously need to be keywords. You need to use content that your search that someone searching for is looking for um, you have to develop high quality content now when we say high quality content it's not quality in the fact that you've got to wear makeup or you know you've got to put on uh, you know your high heels and have a backdrop and have a professional photographer quality content now really just is invaluable content meaning information that people want to hear um, backlinks on your website uh, is really important. And of course, when you've got your YouTube on your YouTube on your website, that is now a backlink to YouTube. When you then go post it on social media, you've now got that on social media. Um, have internal links on your website increases your, your traffic. So again, if I've got a blog, I might say, if you want to watch that video, you can go to YouTube. So I'm sending people from my website to YouTube as much as I am YouTube to my website. Using long tail sentences. So for a little time, a couple of years back, everyone was just into those keywords. So it literally was words that you used. But it's important to know that people go, how to get rich quick. Um, how to not stop, how to stop rolling into my partner on a caravan mattress. So those are long tail sentences. Um, and they're the sentences that your customer that would be looking for. So it's important to know to use those. Um, and then, of course, you've got to review your, your report. So in everything that you do, and I'll be honest, I didn't kind of really know that until I was messing around on my website um, over the course of the weekend. I went into my website and I was able to look at my website reports. It's there. It's really easy. You just click the button. It says website reports. Click it and you can actually see what people are doing on your website, which is really cool. So what, what do people on Google do? And this is important. We need to know how... Um, we need to know what people are searching for, or how they're using Google and YouTube so that we can then provide the relevant content for that. And it comes down to basically three things. So number one is informational, all right? They're not buying. They just want to know why the sky is blue, okay? Or So they're not necessarily looking to buy something. They just want to know why, why it happens. So, for example, if I use the mattress thing again, why do I keep rolling into my partner on, on a caravan mattress? Okay, it's information. They're looking for information to problem solve themselves. I'm not looking to necessarily buy. But if you create content like that, you can say, hey, but we provide this mattress. So you've just got to provide information that's going to help them answer that question and then go, hey, we've got this mattress topper that's going to solve that problem for you. Number two is transactional, meaning that um, people are actually buying. Okay, so where is the nearest dentist? Where can uh, where's where can I get you know where can I get a termite and pest uh, inspection on the Gold Coast? Um, so it's transactional. They're actually looking to buy something, and they're looking at where it is or how to buy it. Um, and then navigational, meaning that they're looking to actually find you specifically or your service specifically. So find Chantel Girardi, um, find employment solutions for um, those with autism. It's navigational, okay? Now, remember the keyword search tool is www.answerthepublic.com. And it is free and you can do two searches per day. So if you put in, um, if you put in plant tags, you can see in Australia what people are searching regarding plant tags. Uh, remember too that, you, as I said, you can do two for free per day. You can also save those searches. So if you did two today, two tomorrow, you just keep saving those searches. But remember that if your ideal customer is in Australia, make sure that you set it to Australia. 
Um, so should you have YouTube for your business? I seriously think you should. Um, so YouTube has over 122 million active daily users. I think there's a lot of people. One billion hours of content is watched daily. 500 hours of content is uploaded every minute to YouTube. The average person watches 19 minutes per day. 99% of YouTubers have other channels. And I think it's important to know that because, you know, we talk about our primary channels, but you need to consider whether or not YouTube is going to be a primary channel channel or whether it's not it's one that's just going to be able to give you a uh, brand authority and consistency online um, youtube is popular not only for entertainment but for education and i think that that's really important because if you think of things like tiktok most people are on there looking for entertainment and they might find some education and maybe then may buy but they're not primarily going on there to buy or to search to buy, they're going on for entertainment. YouTube's very different in that people are going on um, for those three, three things, information, transactional, and navigational. So consider first, what is your strategy? How are you actually going to use YouTube in your business? Um, how are you going to use YouTube for your business? For me, when I first started, it was somewhere for me to, um, to save my videos. So I wanted to save my videos um, on a platform so I didn't have to save them anywhere else. So I could save them on YouTube. So say, for example, if I had a, a video on my website, I, I basically could have it saved, unlisted, private or public in YouTube. And then basically that's hosting it so I can have it there. For my online courses, all my online course content is all saved in YouTube as unlisted, meaning that only if someone gets the URL can they actually click through and have a look at it. So when I first started, <laughs> like everything, it's usually what's in it for me. And for me, it was I needed somewhere to store my course content and I needed somewhere to store my videos for my, my YouTube video. So that was number one. Number two was, okay, well, how do I now go and attract my ideal customer? And it was like, well, if I provide relevant content and people are searching for this content, they're now going to find me. They'll then find my website. They'll then join my programs. Um, and, of course, you can repurpose the hell out of the content. So you can use it for um, on your social media. You can use it in uh, for your newsletters. You can put it on a blog. Uh, you could break it up into tiny, uh, tiny little posts and use it for short videos. Um, there's just so much that you can do with repurposing the content. So the first thing you got to do is create an account huh? and you've got to set, set it up by using customization and settings. So write that down, customization and settings. I am going to take you into the back end and I will show you, but customize, customization and settings are probably the two most important things on YouTube to look at. Um, you need to upload to YouTube consistently. So for example, with Jane, Jane is consistent. So people know that she is online and she is painting live on those particular days so that there is a level of consistency. And you'll often notice that vloggers will, you know, uh, create a video and put it on the same day so people know to go in and watch, watch it on that day. And remember to obviously communicate that as well. Uh, you could include an intro and outro, and I highly recommend that you do. So the intro is what stops people and gets them to click into the video. The outro is going to send them to the next place, uh, the next place you want them to go. The title should always contain keywords. So as I said, use answerthepublic.com. Consider what your ideal customer is looking for. And I'm, go I'm going to show you an example of that. Include your description and your call to action. So there needs to be a call to action in every video. And there needs to be, you know, a title call to action, but there also needs to be a description as well that talks about what's in that video. You have to continually tell people to subscribe. So according to my reports, I think it's something like 80% of people who are, who are regularly watching videos on my YouTube channel have not subscribed. So if that is you, go and subscribe right now to my YouTube channel. I think I'm on 199 today. So you could be number 200. 
Um, so you've got to constantly tell people to subscribe, to subscribe, to subscribe, turn on your notifications because they will watch and they just won't do it, which is ridiculous, but then possibly they're not going to find it. Um, if you guys have got your YouTube URL, for those of you who are live, you can put them in the chat box so people can go through and, um, and subscribe to your channels. Um, and don't forget, you can also turn on the notifications as well. The little notification next to subscribe, you can turn it on so you get an email to say, we've just posted a new video. But you need to keep telling people to do that. Um, YouTube shorts are 60 second videos that are now for YouTube. So um, you can always repurpose your content from TikTok and Reels that are 60 seconds long and you can put them in um, and you can put them on um, put them as a YouTube short now, which is pretty cool. Um, so they're like little nuggets. Um, and you could do live. So for example, Jane, Jane does a live. She paints live uh, every single week and goes live and people can either attend live or they can go back and watch it. Um, and of course, like everything, it is important if you do have a YouTube channel that you review your analytics and you see what's working or not working. And what I really love about YouTube is that it even tells you where people stop watching. So if people are watching you for two or three minutes and every single time they stop watching at two to three minutes, it means that you're not holding their attention at the two to three minute mark, which means the next video you create, you need to ensure that you are holding their attention and you're making them stay engaged. Super important. So TikTok versus YouTube. Um, whatever platforms you decide to use for your business, it's really important that you use um, that, that whatever you do decide to use, you use strategically. So 41% of TikTok users are 16 to 24 years old. 41% are 16 to 24 years old. TikTok is nugget-sized and mostly in, intended for entertainment. So people sitting around looking to be entertained. You, YouTube is a longer form of content, um, but it does also have the 60-second YouTube shorts. YouTube gets 2 billion monthly views versus TikTok that gets 1 billion monthly views. TikTok users are mostly from India and China and the leading, uh, the daily, the France and the UK are leading in terms of daily use and engagement. So France and um, the UK. And that comes to you from promo.com. Um, so since YouTube supports longer videos, it's important to create bite-sized videos to introduce your brand and attract your customers, okay? So they don't have to be long. This is the good thing. I love the fact that they're not one minute. Um, you know, they don't have to be short and straight to the point. They can be slightly more informative, which I like. Uh, but yes, you can introduce your brand and attract more customers. Number two, doing tutorials or how-tos can help customers understand your product better. So again, you know, if we look at the social media content plan that I talk about, you really should cover all of those areas. I might actually quickly name those areas for you. Just give me two secs because I wasn't planning on doing that. Additional content for you. Um, let's find that. So if you literally don't know what to create a video on, here we go. Uh, these are the, so a couple of things that you could create videos on. In fact, I believe everyone has a YouTube channel. Tick it, tick it off the box that you have all of these because you're going to need them for your website. You're going to need them for your email marketing. You're going to need them for your social media anyway. So starting here would be really, really good. So number one is you need your story. So your why and how you got into doing what you do. Number two is your business back story, talking about how the business became a business. So like the journey of becoming a business, choosing your name. Um, you may wish to also talk about your staff and your team members. Um, number three is your, your point of difference. So what makes you different from everyone else? Uh, number four is um, each of the services or the products that you have. You could be talking about the outcomes of each of those services or products. Remember, it needs to be customer and outcome focused. So it's more about the problem it solves, not the deliverables. Uh, number five is sharing your expertise, um, which we spoke about, which is, you know, your top tips, your did you knows, um, your informative stuff. Uh, number six is sharing statistics. So including statistics, obviously, for the left brain people who require those. Um, 
Storymonials are really good, so success stories. So you might have seen the one that Daryl's got at the moment that he's been sharing about a user uh, who is using Strike Hold on her motorbike. Um, you know, short, informative video of using the product, um, but in real, it is actually really a success story, which is awesome. Um, any community values, charities, and things that you want to throw in there, you can as well. Uh, showing your credibility, so qualifications, years experience. Um, engagement's really important. So doing those lives or hold, running a poll or asking people to comment below, um, that, that would be really important too. Handling objections or frequently asked questions um, are really important as well. So I just jumped ship a little bit but gave you some of the topics that you could include, but it will help your customers to understand your product or services a bit better. Number three is behind the scenes. So we all know like my one unboxing uh, reel got 10,000 views. Um, so unboxing works really well. Uh, Tara could be creating a video right now about, you know, all her stuff that's coming into the, um, all her stuff that's arriving right now and just talking about the product as it does uh, and the benefits of the product. Uh, number four would be inspirational videos to help view viewers develop a positive mindset and more. Um, remembering that we've got to get people to believe what you believe. So if, um, you know, Margaret with her plant tags, if she believes that, like, you have to have a plant tag because else you're going to kill your plants, um, she's now going to get the people who buy plant tags to believe that, um, and, you know, if paper is bad for the environment, hers is not paper. So then she's going to get them to believe that. So creating content around that would be really important. Um, and the last one, number five, is create um, features or documentaries to celebrate um, any special uh, social events, any trending things or any special events that are happening. So I think it just comes down to relevant seasonal uh, topics are really important. So just some more um, interesting uh Statistics here, but in 2020, kids in the UK spent about 75 minutes on YouTube, um, and it goes up to 86 minutes uh, for people in the US. About 80% of teens aged between 13 and 17 say that YouTube has helped them learn more about something. Um, Google reveals that 70% of millennials, so ages 21 to 36, visit YouTube to discover new things. 78% of baby boom, boomers born uh, between 1946 and 1964 visit YouTube to get help or learn something new. Um, why don't you think about for a moment, what did you last use YouTube for? Um, for me, it, like we're about to harvest our turmeric, so I will go in and I'll Google how to ha harvest my turmeric, even though I do it every year. Um, I will go in as a reminder and have a look um, at how to at harvest my turmeric. When we were away fishing, I think Sandy Googled how to tie a special knot uh, for his bait. He was uh, wanting to tie the knot, so he Googled how to do a special kind of knot. So think about what you Google and then think about what your customer is Googling and how you can relate that back to your product or service. Okay, so I'll just go to the, um, I'll just have a look at the chat box here quickly before we move on to my back end because we're all dying to see my back end. <laughs> uh, let's have a look. Okay, where are we up to here? So answerthepublic.com. Thank you, Tara, for sharing that. Um, Jane, 222, but the goal is to have over 1,000 by the end of the year. Awesome. Yeah, making sure everyone is subscribed. Awesome. I see Rachel's URL is in there. So just reminding everyone that you get to personalize your URL once you get over 100 subscribers. And seriously, the easiest way to do that, um, it is so easy, but literally go out onto social media, go to your database and say, hey, I can't get my own URL unless I, I get, uh, you know, 100 subscribers. And literally on that day, you will get 100 subscribers because everyone will feel sorry for you. Um, and honestly, that's how I got my first 100. So uh let's have a look i'm just having a look here quickly before we in yep everyone's going to go in so don't forget to download the chat box for those who are live download the chat box we could also start a thread in the vip group um jane will probably do that for us because she's so onto things 
Um, but if you'd like to start maybe a thread in the VIP group, then everyone in the VIP group who didn't attend today can also like your um, YouTube channels. Uh, awesome, people subscribing, everyone's channels. Um, Tara, a friend, a friend of Tara was telling her about a free program that turns video into scripts so you can use it as blog material. So I know that I use Zoom, so Zoom like this. Um, the program that I use is called Otter AI, so O T T E R dot AI. Um, it is free up, up to certain words, but it actually will convert it into, uh, it will actually convert it into, um, not a blog, it will give you the transcript for it. You still have to go in and you have to change it because how you talk and how you type for a blog are completely different. What you can do, Tara, though, is that you can turn on your text in your YouTube videos and there is a way to download it. There is actually a way to download the text from the YouTube videos. So, um, and I know that all of that's free. All right, let's have a look. All right, cool bananas. So you're all in there jumping. Awesome. All right, cool. So I'm going to take you to my back end. If I missed anybody's question, just unmute yourself quickly and let me know. Um, else I'm just going to take you to my YouTube channel. All right. So I normally just access my YouTube channels from my Gmail. So if I'm sitting in my Gmail account, um, I'll just go to my nine, my nine squares on the top right hand side, and then I'll click through to YouTube. And when I click through to YouTube, if you click on your profile picture, so your little circle profile picture. Uh, over here, you can go to your channel uh, and you can go to YouTube Studio. Um, and that's um, probably, you know, the two most important uh, places that you're going to go to over here. So if we just have a little look at my channel, has no one subscribed? That's it. I've still got 199. Uh, let's have a look here. So we've got, so if we have a look at my channel, so I'm just moving the bar out of the way. And I go to my home page over here. You can see that I've got this intro video. So I've got an intro video that is basically like a pinned post that is um, at the top. It's the first video that you get. It's pinned to the top over here. It's like an intro video. And then down here, as you scroll down, you'll see I've got online marketing training. Um, and these over here are what you call playlists. Okay. So over here, you can see this is my intro. I've created intros for each of them. And we are about to mix them up again. And basically, this is a, you can see we, we mix them up every now and then. This is a playlist, which is called online marketing training. Remembering that your playlist does need to be a goo, a, a goo, a Googleicious uh, keyword or long tail sentence that people can actually find you. Okay. Um, and again, it's what your ideal customer would be searching for. It's not what you would want. But as we scroll down here, online marketing training, all my uploads are there. So you can see my most recent uploads. Um, my podcasts are on here as well. So I don't have a podcast. Instead, what I do is I have a playlist, which is called Podcast Playlist. And my podcast playlist, um, I save all of them to this playlist over here. And then I've got it embedded on my website so that on my website, it is feeding. Only that podcast playlist is feeding to my podcast window on my website. So if you don't believe me, go to chantelgerardi.com.au, go to free resources, click into podcast, uh, and you will see all my videos are now feeding into, uh, into there. Now, the one that I wanted to show you, which is kind of really interesting, is I have storymonials from my clients. You can see over here, there's you know, a couple of clients over here. And, um, and when I had this playlist saved as testimonials, because it was my client testimonials. So for my website, having client testimonials, that language is great. But in YouTube, having client testimonials, that language is not great because no one's searching for client testimonials. So what I did was I changed it how business owners get results on social media, which is client testimonials, but business owners would be searching how business owners get results on social media. And my views all increased just by changing the name of that playlist. And I made it egocentric to business owners who would be searching for it. Um, I've got webinars on here as well. And then this over here is YouTube Shorts. So any video that uh, was saved on my YouTube channel that's under 60 seconds, 
um, is saved in what's called YouTube Shorts, okay? That's how the front looks. Now, when you go to the front, you can then also go to videos and you can see all your videos there. Uh, you can go to playlists and you can see your playlists. I do wanna show you this. Um, there is one called uh, Liked Videos. And I was like, I like this video on um, yoga on, uh, it was yoga for perimenopausal women who are trying to lose weight around their stomachs. And I liked it and it actually saved it on my YouTube channel. So <laughs> you need to create um, like a liked videos one and then put that on private. So when you like stuff, it doesn't go on there. But I just kind of thought, you know, everyone in my house uses my YouTube channel. My kids use my YouTube channel because it's logged in on my computer. Um, so if anyone's liking anything or saving anything, it's actually affecting your algorithm and it's also affecting what comes up on your profile so it would be a good idea for you to uh in the back end when we go through it set it so that um those things are turned off so your clients can't see what you're liking because else they're going well why is she liking the wiggles all the time or why is she liking yoga videos about menopause or belly fat um so <laughs> You can turn those settings off uh, in your in your settings in your YouTube channel. But, you know, those things are things that you need to know and people take for granted. So um, you've also got your about. Um, and that's really important. And on the right hand side over here, you've got stats. So you can see when I joined YouTube um, and how many views I've had, which gives me credibility. Um, now, unfortunately, some YouTubers uh, or some people who've got YouTube channels don't turn that off. And I really think they should turn it off because their channel looks old and outdated. Um, and I don't think they'd get many return followers if they weren't posting consistently or doing it. So for me, I always say, if you're going to have something, use it or delete it. Like use it properly or get rid of it. Um, you know, even if it's just once a month. All right, cool. So again, if we just go to the little profile picture at the top right, we then go into YouTube studio. And this over here is where you go in and you make all your big changes. And as I said, the changes that you need to be making are uh, really are all in customization and, um, and in settings. So out of all the two things, write those two down. But if you come to your dashboard over here, it's really cool because you can get a quick overview of what's happening on your site, which is really important. So if the only sort of insider review that you do is here, make sure that you're coming in and, um, and having a look at this page over here. Uh, of course, you also get your comments coming through. So make sure that you apply to them or at least turn it on that you review your comments because, again, you get a lot of people just spamming. The next one down the left-hand side is your content. So this over here is every single video that I post and then the visibility, which is really, really important. Now, if it's unlisted, it means only people with a link can view that, which means VIP. So, you know, someone like Tara who did the... Um, the the program the latest get sales get sales on your website program she has those links the vips and the vip group have those links which means when you click on it you'll have access to it but if you go to my channel you can't find that because people have actually got to buy that program so just remember that unlisted is when you do that now private means you want no one to be able to see that unless it's you on your youtube channel Okay, so don't get those two muddled up, um, but you want to make sure that you understand the three. And public means it's obviously public. So go in and check that your visibility is correct, which is really, really, really important. Um, now, when you go, let me just click on one. I'll just show you here. Because this was a course that I did, I only want course participants to have it, have the URL link. So it's unlisted and only people with that link can see it. Now, as I scroll down, you can see over here, we added a thumbnail to it. Um, and Jane, this is where you need to be having a look. Over here, there's what's called playlists. So all you do is you assign it to a playlist. So I assigned it to the playlist, get more sales on your website using socials and email, meaning that all the six modules are all saved in that playlist. And if I give you that URL to that playlist, you'll have all that course content, which is super important to know. But you can also decide how you want your playlist displayed on your YouTube channel, which is where I noticed Jane, um, Jane didn't have hers set up. 
So if we come out of that now, the next one over here is playlists down the left-hand side. And this over here is where you decide all your playlists. So you can see over here, my course content's unlisted. They're all there. If I go into it, you can see that this playlist has got six videos. It's had 21 views. I can share the playlist and I can decide the order that everything's going to be in. So I've got it in its normal order, which is module one down to module six. So I can share that URL and it'll take you to all six videos, or I can just send you individually to those videos, which makes it great, great for people who are running uh, courses. Um, so here with playlists, um, again, you can see I've got my reviews in there. I haven't called them reviews, but I've basically divided them all up into different playlists so that people can find, find, those, uh, find those videos in those playlists. You can see here for VIP, so all the VIP training sessions, there's 108 in there. All those videos are saved in one playlist, and that playlist is not on my YouTube channel. It is only for my VIPs and my VIPPs that have access to it. Okay, so, so doing that would be really important. Analytics, I'm not going to go through analytics, but seriously, all you've got to do is go through your overview, your content, your audience, and your, and your research. Um, and every time you do, you'll be able to go through and you'll be able to see um, over here how long people are watching for. So this is pretty cool. This video over here that I've got uh, pinned in all my social media, and it's one I use in my email marketing, uh, and I've got it pinned on my YouTube channel. The average view duration is four minutes and five seconds, which means people are watching it mostly to the end, which is really awesome. Um, so you want to be looking at the average duration um, and seeing how long people are actually sitting through and watching those videos for as well. Believe it or not, I think the percentage wise is something like 15 to 20 percent is like a good rate for people to be watching, which is insane. But you want to make sure that your valuable content is obviously at the beginning of it all. Comments, you can, you can set how people see your comments. Um, I review mine before they get published, just in case they are, um, just in case they are um, spammy. Monetization, you can only monetize once you've got a thousand people on your channel and you've had over 4,000 views in a, in a year. But customization, so this over here is the one that, that I was mentioning about Jane, that Jane needs to go into. So customization, this is your layout. And you want to make sure that for your laying out, you can see oh, that's the trailer for people who haven't subscribed. So every time they come into my site, they will see that video. And then down at the bottom, I can actually click and carry and reorder my playlists. So my featured sections of my playlist. So Jane asked the question, will I lose my videos? No, your videos are all there. But what you're doing is you're organizing them on how they are displayed on the front page of your YouTube channel. Okay, and as I said, you can click and drag and move them around. Um, whoa, move them around on how you want them laid out. Um, you then get your branding as well. So this over here is where you do your banner image. The banner in image is a nightmare. It's a skinny long one. It's really difficult to do. And you can also have a watermark uh, on your video for the entire time as well. So you can put that up as well. And this over here is where you set your basic info. So this over here is your channel name and description. So you can edit your channel name up at the top over here, your channel description. This is the part that shows in the about section. So you want to make sure uh, you're getting people to subscribe. And if you've got any free resources that they can download, that that is in your about section as well. And then, of course, you've got your YouTube channel over here. And then you can set your links. So on your banner in your YouTube channel, you've got all these little links and they are clickable. Those links click to your website. They click to your LinkedIn. They click to your, um, you know, book a call. So you can actually direct people and put the link title in there as well as the URL. So ensure that all your links are, um, are up to date as well. So again, if we're just going down the left-hand side, settings is super important. This one over here, you just need to come in. You need to go down the left-hand side and set them up. But your channel tags are incredibly important because this is how people would be searching for you. So you want to make sure that your tags are correct when you're setting them up. 
They are, um, you can write two, three, four words. You can do long tail words. And all you've got to do is use a, um, enter a comma to separate them. So just add a comma and it will block them all together and you'll move them to the next one. And you've got, I think, uh, 500 units that you can have in there. Uh, in your advanced settings, I always say that no, it's not for kids because that else, I've just heard that when you say it is for kids, then they, you know, you might just swear suddenly or say something or use the wrong word and now, now your channel's being blocked. And remember, because I found out that way because most of mine were for kids, I ticked the yes, this channel is for kids and it disables the commenting in your channel. Uh, yep. So that's right. So now you can't have uh, you can't have comments. Then thanks, Jane. Yeah. Uh, you can't have you can't have comments uh, if it's for kids, which means then you don't have that user engagement, and you want to be you want to have people asking questions. Um, your eligibility over here. I mean, what, that's when you get down to monetization. But these are your upload defaults. So I want to show you this quickly. You, you, your call to action that's a standard all the time. So subscribe on my YouTube channel. Visit my website book a call to work with me. You can set that up so it shows at the bottom of every video, but your title needs to be specific to the video that you do each time. So don't put that as in as a default, but the, the, but the description, you can have this as a default. So all you've got to do then is every time you post the video, all you have to do is add the title and add a brief summary about the outcomes of watching that video and then all your other description will be down at the bottom so you don't have to copy paste it you don't have to redo it every single time which is pretty cool um, my channel's uh visit is obviously public but then each video i decide on if it is um i do then decide the video if the video is um is each individual one is unlisted or private and again you can put your tags in there but if your video changes, you should be more specific about the tags that you use based on that video. So if Jane was doing uh, a video about adults and it's adult artwork, then her tag should be adult artwork focused. If it's about the kids, then it should be kids, um, kids, kids focused tags. Um, yep, yeah, so over here, if you wanna add a user, you can add a user in here as well. You can add moderators, um, approved users, in here again this over here comments on your channel hold potentially inappropriate comments for review um so i'm doing that at the moment i prefer to do that because i have got some uh, spammy ones um and those are basically the most important parts of this channel that when you come in you need to have a look at so youtube youtube studio um you know, just going down that left-hand side, but when you're doing your setup, it really needs to be your uh, your content, your playlists, your customization, uh, and those settings. Really, really important to get those right. Um, okay, so does anyone else have any other comments? Uh, let's have a name. All right, cool. So um, just remembering that this is written up as a blog as well. So obviously attending live, you get a lot more information. You get a lot more of the, you know, asking and the questions and the feedback and whatever other brilliant stuff comes to my brain and everyone else's at the time. Uh, but everything is also converted to a blog and put onto the website. So if you do go to chantelgerardi.com.au, you will find the blog over there. It is actually in categories and there will then also be a link to watch the, uh, the recording as well. Thank you.